It's Cape Cod, August 2009. It must be 85 degrees, the humidity is 95%. I'm sweating buckets. I'm waiting on 11 tables all at once at the height of the rush, evening rush at Adrian's restaurant. My family's longtime Italian eatery on a bluff overlooking Provincetown where I've spent every summer of my life. I have a deeply loving, if colorful family who I'm always pushing boundaries with. Julian. Stop chatting with the customers. Come and pick up your food. It's getting cold, Chef Adrian yells from the open kitchen. Stop being such a bitchy queen dad. I, <laughs> I bark back with an earshot of all of our customers, picking up the tray of wood-fired oven pizzas and hoisting them away to table 55. It's been a busy night. I nearly forgot the aperitif for Helen and the Diet Coke for Peter at table four. It was a thrill to wait on my political hero, Robert Reich. I gave extra attention to the handsome gay couple until they were a bit rude. <laughs> Mrs. Merrill ordered the salmon again, and I've run three credit cards emblazoned with American Psychiatric Association. It's August in Schwero. I am a talkative and precocious 23-year-old, a favorite of the customers, a powerhouse of a waiter who can load up on tables, but also bossy and entitled. I'm the waiter who always volunteers to take the last, t the last table of the night, but somehow shir like shirks the duties of side work at the end of the night. My dad, Adrian, is the eponymous chef. My mom, Annette, runs the front of the house. My sister, our cousins, our friends, all work in the restaurant. Carol, our theatrical hostess with a limp, mostly gets in the way, but she is, plays the best jazz standards and instigates shift drinks with my mom, so we adore her. The beefcake Serbian busboy shamelessly flirts with the senior vice president of a major insurance firm while his clueless wife looks on. <laughs> My sister and I bicker incessantly. Ellery, our jovial if perspiring bartender and I plot the joint that we plan to smoke at the end of the night. <laughs> See, the thing I've done most in my life is work in my family's restaurant, 14 seasons, and that's not counting the ones we were skirting uh, child labor laws. I, I was born here on Cape Cod, but my parents are washer shores. They grew up in the same suburban Connecticut town and got out as soon as they could. In 1973, my dad moved to Provincetown at the age of 17. Uh, he made silver jewelry, shucked scallops, got a gig, uh, dishwashing at the Red Inn, where he stayed for 11 years. My mom worked there too. My parents caught the ambitious fever of the 1980s. They got married, bought a house, opened a restaurant, had two kids in three and a half years. They had success, especially in those early years. And when you work in a seasonal business, it means you had your winters off and most of the fall and the spring too. I don't mean, mean to paint a solely idyllic picture here. Some seasons were more profitable than others. It's tough to rely on a year's worth of income in a short 10 week season. As housing costs skyrocketed on Cape Cod, it got harder and harder for us to find help, especially in the back of the house. And if you've ever worked alongside your family, and I think maybe some of you have, um, you know it can be hard, very hard. And while I had a classic case of best little gay boy in the world syndrome as a child, by the time I was a young adult, I could be a complete terror. I attempted to quit the restaurant a number of times. I desperately wanted to get away, at least for my family's restaurant. I longed to work at uh, some fancier eatery in the heart of Provincetown where I could make bigger tips from a gayer clientele. <laughs> By 2009, I had graduated from NYU with a bachelor's degree in individualized study, very useful. Um, <laughs> I couldn't find stable professional work more than unpaid inter internships and I was begrudgingly back at the family restaurant wearing that old, that old Waitron skirt. What I didn't appreciate at the time was how I was honing the skills and abilities that would become the greatest asset in my professional career. Real, hard, tangible skills, the sort of skills they don't teach you, can't teach you in college. Teamwork, the ability to prioritize and triage in the heat of the moment 
and most crucially, the capacity to relate to people from all walks of life, to meet people where they are. Even on my most sullen days, I was supremely proud of the family business. I felt a real pride and responsibility in being part of something that was bigger than myself. See, no one gets anything done on their own in a restaurant. You inevitably need the prep cook to knees everything for service, the bartender to make your drinks, the host to corral the customers, the busher to clear the table, and if the dishwasher calls in sick, you're screwed. You also have to figure out how to work with people you might not like or don't get along with, to put on a good face to the public, even if you're seething inside that Jackie Johnson has sold the last tiramisu. You've gotta have stamina, both physical and emotional. Inevitably, an order gets screwed up, someone is unhappy, you need to be able to pivot, to think on your feet, to make a plausible excuse, to make someone happy, to prioritize, to triage. And most crucially, restaurant work taught me how to deal with most anyone. You want me to listen attentively to your life? Sure, I'm there. To feign that I care how the rainy weekend ruined your getaway? Absolutely. <laughs> to make a playful yet biting joke that gently reminds that obnoxious customer they've gone too far? far? Yep, absolutely. The restaurant taught me how to meet people where they are. Some customers want an intimate evening where the waiter is seen and unheard. Others, and these are my customers, want your life story. They want to hear about your winter and where you traveled and how the gnocchi is made. They crave that interpersonal connection at your table. And so through the restaurant, I got really good at service, at the art of serving people of making customers feel welcome and attended to and seen, to be part of the reveling in their vacations, their favorite dish, their traditions. Restaurant work taught me how to relate to other people, how to be invested in one another, to appreciate how complete strangers can become part of the cadence of our own lives, to greet the regulars year after year who watched me and my sister grow up, who later would help fuel a quixotic run for public office. During these summers waiting on tables, I was increasingly drawn to the possibility of politics. And I was especially inspired by the campaigns of Ralph Patrick, of Barack Obama. So I cajoled my parents to host a fundraiser at the restaurant, first for the Obama campaign in 2008 and later for Governor Patrick. And it was at the restaurant and those political events that ultimately led to my big break getting hired as a field organizer on Governor Patrick's reelection campaign in 2010. And it was the tips from the restaurant that made possible uh, having a life where I made $300 a week uh, working on that campaign. So if you can attend to the needs of 11 tables amidst the din of a busy restaurant, you can organize democratic activists, you can uh, juggle constituencies, you can find a way to connect with that fellow senator who you thought you had nothing in common with. Indeed, restaurant work is the ingredient that has propelled my career. The seminal experience that taught me the skills, the work ethic, the ability to connect with people that made possible for a 30-year-old queer kid from the smallest town in Cape Cod to run for state senate and to win. Surely, the whole of my experience has contributed, to do, has contributed to what I do now, and I, and I don't mean to diminish those experiences. The high school choral, choral program, where that first ignited my interest in community organizing, the health policy classes, the LG, LGBTQ leadership programs, getting the chance to work alongside brilliant public servants at the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Yet, when I reflect most on the skills I rely on day to day, those stem from restaurant work. And when I'm asked, what is it like to be a state senator? What is it like to be a politician? Well, it's like working in a restaurant. <laughs> and, and it's taken me years to appreciate these truths because our biases about work are so embedded, they're so strong. It's not the most prestigious items on my resume that were most determinative in, the, in my development as a professional person, 
Yet it's those most prestigious achievements that get the lion's share of the credit for my success. This has all made me think about the work we value and the work we don't. What work is considered work with dignity? What work is valued? And what work is considered undesirable, unfortunate, what work unfortunate and transitory? And I think as a society, we've got it wrong. We don't see the restaurant work, we don't see the retail work, we don't see the service work as valuable. If you're a lawyer or a doctor or an investment banker or a senator, your work is considered important and access, income, and prestige follow. Yet, most restaurant work and its cousins in the professional world are devalued. I'm saddened by how we don't value the work that so many people do, the work that sustained my family for decades, the work that sustains so many in this town today. My parents are among the best managers I've ever encountered. Hey, they put up with me for 14 seasons. The work, so the work that I was doing in 2009 is just as worthy of praise and validation as what I do now. And I think for those, how many people in the room have worked in a restaurant, have worked in service, have worked in retail? See? Just think about that, right? But the irony here, right? The irony is that in COVID-19, although restaurant jobs were deemed essential, but that still didn't reframe our collective perspective, our lens on work. And in Provincetown, the pandemic gave those of us who could work remotely a playground with record profits, while the waiters and bartenders in this town wondered if they could make ends meet in the dampened season. Could they weather the July COVID outbreak or another shutdown? In 2012, we closed Adrian's restaurant after 28 seasons. Even then, it would have surprised me to know that just four years later, my name would be on the ballot as a candidate for public office. I've now been serving in the Massachusetts Senate for six years, and in many ways, my life still feels like I'm working in the restaurant. I'm racing to a session or a committee hearing. I'm juggling tasks, prioritizing asks. I'm forgetting to return calls in a text. Maybe there's some cutting words between me and a colleague. I'm dealing with all sorts of people at their best and at their worst. It's exhilarating, exhausting, a little dysfunctional, and tremendously rewarding. So I'm still serving, and I'm still sweating in front of people in public. So I'm Julian Sear. This is my TED Talk on serving and service. Can I take your order? Thank you.